Hello, and now... <laughs> and now, for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around, and I've discovered... Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to and now for something completely machinima, the podcast about machinima and virtual production and real-time filmmaking and other related technologies. So this week we are talking about a pair of music videos, one that I picked and one that Tracy picked. And, uh, oh, I guess I should introduce you. My name is Phil. <laughs> With me is Tracy Harwood and Damian Valentine. Hello. And uh, Ricky is stuck in the La Brea tar pits, but he will... Uh, Get free soon and be back with us in our next episode. So, two music videos. I'm going to start. Uh, I have picked one that's uh, not my... It's not really my usual type of pick. Um, th there's no uh, Sims getting uh, abused or, uh, uh, you know, goofy comedy or whatever. Uh, this one is called the, basically the most unfunny title in the history of uh, of short films, Children of Pain. Um, and it is a music video. Uh, the, the reason that my attention was called to it initially was because our friend of all of us here at the show, Tom Jantal, was in, uh, involved in the animation and production of this uh, music video. So uh, what am I going to do? Not watch a film that Tom was part of. So um, I dove into it. Um, it's 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 interesting because there were other people, other fingers in the pie, so to speak. So I'm not sure that I could definitively tell you exactly, you know, which parts Tom touched and which he didn't. But but there's a sense of his flavor in this. Uh, I don't even know if I I know how to how to define what his flavor is. I, I think I'm going to cheat and just say it's for me, it's, I know it when I see it. Okay. Uh, and that is true here. Um, but there's a, there's kind of elements of uh, mixing 2d and 3d elements in a creative way, which Tom is just a master of. Um, and then I happen to know uh, that the subject matter of this video, which is uh, the pain of war, that that is a subject that Tom knows more about than he wants to uh, and is is dear to his heart and is probably, if I had to guess, probably part of the attraction to this project for him uh, because this is... Uh, Tom knows war, like I said, and, and I'll, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. So... This this song and the video essentially is a, uh, a, a, a frankly painful look at the impact of war um, generally and also referencing a specific conflict on the innocents, uh, on children. Um, and the the. The conflict that uh, this that inspired this song and also the video is the uh, the Israel Palestine conflict, um, and I think it was frankly brave of all the artists involved with this to even take on that topic because it's it's a sensitive one, uh, and boy are there strong feelings on on different sides of that. So it's, it's hard. It's a hard subject to engage with without some inherent risks of really upsetting people. 
Uh, and I think the way that they solved that, and I'm curious to see if you guys uh, agree at all, but I think the way that they solved that challenge is if there's anything that you can focus on in a war that you would think everyone can agree with, it's that children shouldn't be paying the price and and way too often do, you know? Um, I think that's true on small scale. If a husband and a wife are disagreeing, the child shouldn't pay the price. And I think it's true on the global scale as well that, uh, you know, grownups have their stupid conflicts and uh, fire their stupid weapons and children don't have anything to do with that and shouldn't, but they get caught up in it. That's, that's, that's the, uh, that's the uplifting message of this video. It's not intended to be uplifting. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Uh, it's painful. The The song lyric for my taste is a little bit on the nose. Um, but you know, that's just a stylistic, uh, uh, you know, choice that's, that's, you know, maybe not my favorite. But the video is beautiful. Uh, the song is a relatable and admirable sentiment about uh, war, about protecting children. And uh, it's artistically, uh, it, it's, I always hesitate to use the word beautiful when, it, when, it, when it's dark subject matter like this. But there's a beauty in this, even though it's, uh, this is a lament. This song uh, is is a uh, it's a crying out, I think, um, and and I feel like that the I suspect that the that more than just Tom of the people involved in this video have been touched by this, the subject matter of this, uh, in a personal way, and it's not just they're reacting to something that they saw on the news or saw people tweeting about or something. That uh, if if they're at all like Tom, they've lived in an area where they've seen war and what it can do. And uh, so anyway, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a painfully beautiful piece of work, and uh, I, I'm curious what uh, what you guys thought of it. Well, I um I wasn't sure which war had inspired it because there's two currently happening, get a lot of um, attention in the in the news. Um, so thank you for clearing that up for me. Um, and let, may I just say too, I feel like the, that that's a credit to the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yeah, that's kind of what that it, that it does that. not make that the most important thing about this film. Yeah. I think that's a credit to it. I think it, it's message can resonate yeah. further because of that. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's going to apply to a lot of conflicts that happen around the world, especially those two right now, but it, you're right. It doesn't specifically identify who is fighting. It's not about that. It's about the children. And um, you're right. This particular war is a very sensitive one. And there are people on both sides who have very strong opinions. And I think what this film does is it doesn't say that's the right side, that's the wrong side. Um, it's not about them. It basically, it's both sides are wrong. It's the children who are suffering because the adults can't figure it out. And I think that's a very important message. And uh, this film, it's not an easy film to watch. No. And it's not meant to be. But it is worth watching because it is so well crafted. And I can understand why Tom Jantel and the other people who worked on it would be thinking about the current conflicts happening and it's bringing back memories that Maybe they don't necessarily want to relive, but they want to highlight that this is something that people aren't necessarily thinking about. Yeah. Um, when they're arguing about which side is right. Um, yeah, it's the film that came to mind was The French Democracy. And it's a very different film from this, but that's another film that took a real world political situation where lots of people were suffering and that they expressed the, the creator of that expressed his feelings for it and this is something that is taking a real world inspiration uh something really nasty that's happening in the world and they've been inspired to to make this film to you know share 
their feelings about it and to try and um, educate the children of course in the middle of this conflict and it's going to happen in any conflict um, and they're the ones that are paying the price that they, like you said Phil they shouldn't have to pay uh, I don't know you know what else to say about it because it's a very powerful mm -hmm. um, yeah. piece of film that I'm still processing it so I don't necessarily have the words it's hard uh, to bloviate about a film like this yeah because mm -hmm. it, it it hits you it yeah. does well, you know, from from um, I I mean, I completely agree with you, but I I did do a little bit more digging into it in terms of the Good. the creators and what have you. It it to me, this is actually a perfect example of what Tom always used to talk about when he referred to animation, a n y m a t i o n, any uh, content uh, content from any source composited together to create a compelling story. This epitomizes that. He's got content that's real life footage, that's 2D animation, that's um, traditional, you know, 3D, real time machinima type stuff. And it, and he's brilliantly pulled all that mishmash of stuff into, you know, as a, as a kind of a montage, um, uh, you know, approach to storytelling. He's achieved that in this. And that's. That's a, a, you know, I've not seen it done quite as well. I've not seen him do it quite as well as he has done with this particular one. Yeah, he's not... kind of at a peak, isn't he? He's he's he... he's really, yeah, he's getting yeah. even better. He was already, he definitely was amazing, I mean, he but yeah, always talked about mixing two D and three D, and we've seen him do that a little bit. But this has got even more different types of footage in it. Um, it's astonishing, and 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 it's a it's a, like I said, it's animation. Um, you know, it's not the first time that Tom's worked with a professional musician either. Um, I don't know if you actually recall this, but um, a little while back we talked about another film that he made also in reference to um, child, you know, children, childhood and all that kind of stuff, childhood memories and what have you, um, which was called Lion's Feet. Um, I'll share the link back to that one so that you can kind of see. It might even be that he's kind of pulled in some of the content that he created at that time for that film, which was mm -hmm. probably created for something else that he was doing also in this one, um, because there's definitely some kind of similar aesthetic in, in what we're looking at. Um, to be honest, I think if I did not see Tom's name on this kind of, it's really interesting. You said the same thing, Phil. Even if Tom's name wasn't on it, this would be Tom's work for me, 100%. Even though it doesn't have quite the aesthetic that actually runs through most of his work, which is uniquely Tom. And that's right. that kind of clockwork reference that, you know, he uses. You, you remember all the all things of like course. ticking right. away and whatnot. You, if you saw that, you would know instantly, oh, yeah, that's a Tom Gentle. But somehow this is also a Tom Gentle. And I... I couldn't quite put my finger on why I thought that. And uh, and it's really interesting that you said exactly It's really same. hard to identify, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's there. It's definitely time. It is there. You can, you can kind of see it. Um, but then taking a look at the, uh, at the work uh, of the musician, um, I think you've got other kind of forces coming in here. And I've not really seen Tom work quite so closely as it's likely that he has done with the other two in the mix here. The musician is, um, he's Boston, US-based, a um, guy called Vince Sylph. Um, he wrote the lyrics and the music after the events that took place on the 7th of October last year. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, he said it was written for the many innocent children whose lives had been tragically impacted by those uh, ter terrible events that day and, and that it is also dedicated to all the innocent um, children affected by wars throughout the world. So he never intended it to be pinpointed by a, a single event, um, which I, I think is, I think that comes through the video as well, as you as you both sort of said. He's actually a producer and um, apparently has a background as a painter and a graphic designer too. And his bio also states that um, he grew up in a Greek, Turkish, Middle Eastern neighborhood which gave him a taste of orthodox and Byzantine chant and ancient music. And actually, wow. when I was listening to that music, you know, having just come back from Istanbul, you can actually hear 
the 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 Middle Eastern notes yes in the piece really really well and that absolutely that, that is so Greek Turkish in its uh, in mm. its approach you can definitely make sense of that um, but super interestingly he identifies the the genre in which he's created this work as dark future pop industrial ethnic atmospheric and cinematic. Wow. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. All those things. What? Well, can't get over that. But that is actually, you know, the musical, uh, you know, that's the musical version of Tom's Uber, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This kind of conceptually montage-like right. uh, approach. And I think, therefore, what you've got is a great mix between the music and the image because it's... That's what it is. It's bricolage on both sides. Um, now, in terms of the video animation, you've also got this other creator, a lady called Tanya. I think you pronounce it Subatich, Subatich, um, working with with Tom. Now, Tanya is that she's a Serbian artist, and obviously Tom is Croatian, so there's a you know a little bit of um, difference there. I would have said um, both of these guys are creating animation freelance working together um as i said it's the first time i've seen tom do a creative project with someone else actually normally i think he does them on his own normally now tanya specializes in visual storytelling and actually according to her youtube channel has been experimenting with generate generative ai for a while too which is interesting because there's also elements that i can see in that video that are generative ai some of the movement is definitely generating right. the value of this guy. So it's mm -hmm. runway type thing that's being used in there. And that's clearly, I think, a Tanya aspect to it. Not that I want to unpick it, but, uh, you know, I'm just sort of right, right, right. where it's all come from. So you've got in there, you know, real life, 3D, 2D and AI all pasted together, which is astonishing. Now, you know, clearly there's a, a there's a lot of reference to war and death and and you know ch children losing their homes, their family, their friends, their familiar life patterns um in these kind of terrible waves of 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 a bombing that they kind of witness um from whatever remains of their their lives and it's littered with symbols symbols that go far beyond the current conflicts, I thought, which are to do with, uh, you know, you've got the red poppy in there, you've got toy soldiers in there, and you've kind of got teddy bears in there. All of those have a, you know, they have a long association with the kind of, you know, conflict representation that you're, you're seeing in this. And it's incredibly powerful because of that, that whole set of references that are being made, uh, which, you know, Put it in, a, in they put it a, a, a you know across time really in in terms of what it what it's about it's it's children everywhere but any time is basically what the the message is through the symbolism really um, incredibly emotive stuff um, you know you 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 definitely get um, the literal uh, sense of the of the meaning uh, of what's behind it. Um, I think actually the animation style is highly stylized, um, and in some ways it's it's a little bit um, Disney like, you know, with the big eyes um, and the and the the presentation of the of the, of the way the, the kids move and the teddy bear and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I think, albeit the subject matter and the song, kind of, you know, hold hold the tone well. The the, the fact that you have that shift between the child's eye view and the reality of destruction i think that's 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 quite a quite a contrast in some ways um and it's it's maybe the aspect of it that i like the least um given given what it's about but if it was any more you know re realistic or probably any different kind of aesthetic you know maybe maybe you wouldn't have got the the deep meaning out of it that was intended through all these symbols that, mm -hmm. that are front and center in what you see um so it's a i think it was a really interesting pick I, it was great to see um tom's 
name attached to this and yes and for him to be clearly putting into practice some of the things that he's been talking about for such a long time in such a a creative and meaningful way because i think that's what's you know that this is this is a really strong example of of animation for me it's a great pick mm -hmm. thank you yeah thank you so you had a pick as well uh I did. Um, called well, firefly yeah um, well mine tell us about like, it well, it's a slightly different. In some ways, it's a little bit similar, but and it, but it's a it's also really, I suppose, quite different. Really, actually, thinking about it, Firefly by uh, Esoterica, um, and actually, and actually, the, the 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 video itself has been created by a guy called Louis Andrade um, in Unreal Engine, um, and it's been made using MetaHuman um, avatars and mocap technology using a concept um, by two of the Esoterica band members, um, Toby and Luke Keast. Now, Toby Keast is actually the lead singer and Luke plays drums in this band. Now, Esoterica, it's an, an alternative rock band. It's London-based, relatively small. Do, do, do I want to say it's relatively small? Kind of niche, but it's toured with folks like Marilyn Manson and, and a few others that you will have heard of. So it's you know, it's got chops, but maybe not a global audience um, in the way some of the really big bands has. Um, it's a fusion of kind of atmospheric melodies, powerful vocals, intri intricate instrumentation, according to their description. Um, and super ironically, as we're recording this, they have literally just finished the Firefly tour, which is, from what I understand has gone down particularly well. Now, Andre has commented that for this video, what they did was combine the ethereal metal sound of Esoterica's music with this kind of mystical and futuristic, uh, what they described as game cinematic visuals. The video took a year to make. And um, wh when I first sort of came across it, I didn't realize they were actually doing a Firefly tour, fly, Firefly tour. Um, which I think has largely been driven by the response to this video. Um, mm. the, the, the avatar itself, that uh, the main character that you see with the uh, wires and what have you, is actually um, a digital version of the lead singer. Um, I have to say, I wasn't, um, I wasn't really, you know, sort of finding all that out. I wasn't really surprised how well the music and the video complemented each other i mean it was obviously it was going to complement each other because they were so closely related in the creative process um which is somewhat unusual when you see a music video because normally you know the music guys will say oh yeah you're so and so like like in tom's case i would say tom probably came to the party with the musician having already created the music and i got the strong sense that maybe there was some co-created um, elements to this particular piece and the way that it was done. Um, so um, I'll tell you what, the, the, yeah, okay. So so when I was watching it, the, the, the thing that, that I kind of remembered, I don't know if you remember me sharing this film with you as well. Um, do you remember the Jackson Wang Cruel video? Do you remember that? Do you remember me sharing that with you? last year i think so about a year ago jackson wang very well-known singer um uh, asian singer uh created this most astonishing video using unreal engine in a mandalorian style site type of oh of yeah I'm nice. do you remember yeah. that yeah um well at the time that was made with you know they were all actors or dancers performers basically and then the you know in post-production they put all the uh, the CGI effects over it with a with the background and what have you already in there, but what you've got here is the same kind of effect, but this time it's been fully created in Unreal Engine in one year. This is a development of Unreal Engine in one year, from that piece of stunning work that Jackson Wang created to this kind of uh, creative aesthetic. Now they talk talk about this particular video as being groundbreaking i actually thought jackson wang's was groundbreaking last year but this is a you know this has moved the game on a little bit i think for a, a music video 
the description of the video itself, the the you know the storyline of it is is quite vague. Um, the only uh, the only kind of real thing that I could get out of it was that um, you've got a young protagonist navigating a mysterious forest guided by a luminous firefly on a quest to confront the end of level boss, a cyborg version of the lead singer. Um, there's, there appears, in my view, to be some kind of reference to war. I think, well, at least a kind of a post, post-war post futuristic setting where you've got this kind of badly injured former soldier probably sharing memories um, that are played out in the video as some kind of dream. So I guess that's what the game-like aspect to it is. I think <laughs> rather interestingly, because it's a, you know, a rock band, there's some reference to drugs in this as well. You know, you've got these magic mushrooms, um, which is possibly a reference, I think, to the band's identity, esoteric, meaning cryptic and for the select few, I guess. Maybe that's a reference to that. Android himself, um, dis- uh, you know, he, he's, he's described as a, as a passionate short cinematics creator who's especially interested in cutting edge 3D computer graphics who has a actually a film industry background as a visualization artist. And when I looked him up, guess what? Uh, he's got credits on Transformers, X-Men, The Mummy, Passengers, Sully, Cloverfield 10, and Terminator Genesis <laughs> in roles um, such as previs and post-vis and also lead visualization artist. So we've clearly got yet another example of a very talented creator uh, using this kind of unreal platform to develop his uh, workflow. And of course, you know, he's got a showreel on Vimeo that you can see what the, uh, some of the work that he's done over the years. Um, he's also got a, uh, a YouTube channel that he calls Mastering Cinematics, not like yours, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> not like yours. Um, however, these are not really tutorials in the same vein that quite a lot of the tutorials we see. Uh, he's basically, you know, showing some CG shorts, uh, a few unreal techniques, and basically quite a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So he's hooking his, um, you know, line to the creative practice and the quality of the creative practice to demonstrate what it is you know to or to demonstrate how he, how he's how he's doing it and i think this particular video is actually an example of the of the creative work that he primarily focuses on doing so unlike many of those tutorial folks the creative stuff comes after they've done the tutorial bit whereas i think it's with this guy, it's the other way around. And you can clearly see in this video that he's a passionate creator because this work is stunning to me. It's really absolutely amazing in, in how it's, um, you know, the, you know the, the, the visual aesthetic of it is, is just incredible, I think. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, given it's a, t- a smallish band, I wouldn't be at all surprised if what we don't end up with here given who android is and and given the the you know what what's being showcased i wouldn't be at all surprised if this doesn't actually help spark global interest in this particular band um much like the impact of cruel and his video uh, jackson lang's video had on demand for his work as well which um was also really interesting so yeah that's my little intro to it what did you think uh, I'm visually super stunning video, and uh, I, I admire the, the 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 craft involved. You you mentioned that you suspect that the visual elements of this and the music that that there was maybe some overlap in terms of yeah hundred the creation going on, and I think that's frankly it would surprise me if that wasn't the case because of how well they integrate. Um, probably the most noticeable place for that is the uh, the, the song's musical crescendos that coincide with 
her eating the mushrooms, right? And there's this big up, yeah. you know, upburst of light and she levitates into the air and all that. I think I assumed that the mushrooms were at least a vague uh, Lewis Carroll reference. Um, mm, maybe. The whole notion of that eating the the mushroom, that there's a transformation that happens and that this was a kind of a sense of a, a journey of transformation that because of the way that it, it the, the final time, I think it's the third and final time that she goes to, to eat. She's not able to complete that. And then, sorry for spoilers. I don't, I assume spoilers aren't a big deal here, but, and then it kind of goes back and she's sleeping. And so this was a dream. So it's almost like, uh, uh, there's a becoming happening, but it's, you haven't arrived yet that that's, that's what this little girl's journey kind of embodies is. And, and I'm not sure how the, the avatar, uh, plays into that, but, uh, you know that I, I feel like all of this is her, uh, that that the the avatar as well as the journey that really it's all about her and becoming something else. There's something maybe inside her that's mm. she's trying to achieve or overcome. Or they leave it deliciously vague. I love that they leave it vague. Yeah, because we can interpret it so many different ways. So, um, yeah, beautiful story craft. I think the. Uh, the structure of the narrative as as such uh, is it it's very traditional old school music video mm -hmm. format when when a music video is story and not just abstract when it's actual story you know that there's these different peaks that you reach and and it's very tightly structured you know her outfit changes at each transformation and just all all these just these uses of color and stuff, somebody that's not accident. That's either someone who has studied uh, the story craft of short form, particularly music video creation or like studied formally, or they've just watched a lot and learned from that. Cause it's, it's there's, there's some classical elements to the structure of this uh, and they're classical for a reason. They're very effective, you know, and, and frankly, there's a lot of me that, Having grown up on MTV, I mourn, you know, the passing of that era when, when music videos, when there, there were auteurs in music videos, mm. um, you know, doing this kind of thing. A lot of whom went on to be very well-known film directors, by the way, uh, but they would get their start with, with doing uh, creations just like this, mm. um, w which are just, just wonderful little morsels and it was kind of a whole it was a genre that that uh you know that that peaked and then kind of went away and now when we get a taste of it like this in the modern era it's pretty it's pretty special because it's not it's not commonplace there's no vehicle for this other than you know the loud landscape of youtube where um it it's easy for it to get lost so yeah i loved this i i'm i'm uh one of the effects that I found fascinating was the, I don't know how else to describe it, except it, it almost had like a fiber optics look with some of the way that the lights would move, you know, with the glowing ends and all that. That's that's what it made me think of is fiber yeah. optics. Yeah. Um, almost a liquid feel to the motion. And that's so... Uh, that's beyond my skill set. Like, I, I don't even know how to do that. I know it can be done. I know that in Blender and engines like that, there are algorithms that help you achieve that. It's just not an area that I've even dabbled in. So I'm I'm, I'm pretty fascinated by it. Um, and it's just so well crafted. The use of light in this, uh, the use of color, um, the yeah. shot selection and the, the choice of when to cut again, all that, that classical short form music video story structure of, of, you know, incorporating in also when the lead singer is singing. Um, it's very smart to model that character after the lead singer. Uh, if, assuming that you're correct about that, because, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that makes a, 
a virtual singing performance look more authentic than for it to be the actual person doing the singing. You know what I'm saying? So even if it's a, a modeled version, everything about the way the throat and mouth shapes and all that work, if it's fake, even someone who doesn't know what they're looking for can spot it. And, and it just feels inauthentic. Yeah. Uh, this felt authentic. Obviously, it's, you know, the guy actually has something below his torso in real life and all that. It's it's it's, it's a fake image. But again, the uh, that was a good choice. So, uh, yeah, I, I just very impressive. This is from the era of music video that I think inspired Paul Marino uh, with the uh, that still seeing uh, green. Still seeing green. I'm still seeing green. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that era of a story and cutting to the singer at certain points and stuff. I mean, that's that's what his his film all those years ago was it 15 years ago now more. That's what that emerged out of. It, it, and frankly, that era was already dying then. Like, I, I feel like Paul being very close to me in age probably also remembers fondly on when there was some amazing little storytelling nuggets that were happening in the world of music video. And that era is gone. Now it's completely gone, right? I mean, there's... So, uh, yeah, this, this harkens back to that. It's extremely well executed. So... Yeah, great pick, Tracy. Mm. Really good. I Amy, what did you think? That yeah, sorry, <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> um, I thought it was pretty stunning. There were a lot of effects in there that I was starting to think, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. I, I know it's not made with Unreal rather than iPhone, but there's, there's certain things in there that no matter what platform you're using, they're really hard to do. Um, like the cables coming out of the, the main guy, and they're flexible. And so I was thinking, well, how would I do that in iClone? Uh, it's very tricky. Um, uh, so, you, you know, it's given me some ideas of things I'd like to try out just to see if I can, you know, kind of replicate those effects. Um, I did really enjoy the contrast between the cybernetic machine guy and the girl in the forest, completely surrounded by nature, and whereas he's just surrounded by rocks in this sort of dead yes. environment. Mm. From Great what point. You can see it. Yeah, and it's it's very dark, so you can't really see much of the surrounding. But it, there's nothing really there. Um, but they've both got that firefly. Like he's got it at the beginning in his in his head, and then she's out in the forest, and it kind of lands on her hand, and it wakes her up. And that's when she starts. Uh, it, it takes off, and she chases after it, uh, running through the forest. Um, you know, I, I like things like that. Um, but I also like that. I used to feel it's open to interpretation. Um, someone could get a completely different meaning out of this from someone else. And I think that, that works nicely. It? It, um, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with what I have to say because you haven't already said. I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was extremely well crafted. I liked the music. Um, I liked the way that it was animated and the, the lip sync on the character singing as well. That's a hard one. I mean, lip sync for characters talking can be tricky getting it right, but when you're singing, that's even harder because the mouth moves so much differently. Uh, but it doesn't look wrong. Like when lip sync, it doesn't. Is wrong, not even, not for a moment. Yeah. 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 yeah it's really nicely even, done. Even if it's slightly off, it looks wrong, but this doesn't. Yep. Um, to the point where you could think, is that the really the singer, and they've put some CGI wires and stuff on him, or makeup or prosthetics? But it's not because it is all unreal. But um, it could have been done that way, and the lip sync is that good. So yeah, this is a very impressive piece of work, and I feel like I need to watch it a couple more times to fully mm. absorb everything that's put into it because there's a lot of work has been put into this. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think it's another marker in the sand for Unreal, this one. Yeah. And yeah. these creatures. Excellent yeah. pick. Great. Do you think the hole through the head, uh, was that inspired by uh, that recent, that movie from last year that was AI themed, uh, the, the Creator? The Creator. I had the that's same the, thought. The Creator is the first time I've ever seen that, um, that approach to design, mm. where there's this hollow hole through the, through the head yeah. of the Android. And well, that's uh, a I know we're not really here to talk about the creator, but that was another visually stunning film. Oh, 
Yeah. And they had a tiny budget for it as well, compared to some of the other big budget stuff that doesn't look as good as that. Yeah. 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 That's one of my favorite films from last year. Just, just great story, really well told. The effects are yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll uh, that'll wrap it up for this episode. Um, what are your thoughts, listeners? Are we uh, are we on target? Are we off target? Let us know what you think of these films, uh, or if you've got suggestions for something we should consider watching in the future. Talk at completelymachinima.com or leave us a note in the comments. On behalf of my co-hosts, Tracy and Damien, I'm Phil Rice, and we will see you in our next episode. Bye.